two of you that our um, I, I did have a wealth of the March uh, 23rd <coughs> Rollinsford Select Board to order um, present at Town Hall oh, sorry, uh, Miles oh. England on the phone we have Paul Cass and Denise Knowles um, so uh, held in emergency in accordance with RSA 91A colon 2 section 3 letter B due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, first item on the agenda is community input. People would need to press star 6 to unmute themselves if they want to. I don't see anyone online that besides, or would we see them in the list? Besides? Yeah, you would see a phone okay. number. Oh, I guess we have cellmate. That's good. Okay. Salome. Okay, no community input. Um, the consent calendar uh, we, uh, approved the minutes from the March, March 9th meeting. We all um, okay with those? Denise? Yeah. Okay. No. Nope. I think. Okay. All right. We'll, we we can vote. Um, we we can also just accept them by um, consensus. Consensus. All right. Yeah. We're good. Um, <clears throat> Department head business police. Um, I don't see Bob on the phone, but we do have two purchase orders that he's passed along. Um, that I will make the motion. Um, is is Selma hearing us? Do we know? I I believe she's okay. hearing us. Uh, I'll move purchase order 1897 to Irwin Ford for $33,337 for a 2020 police vehicle uh, per the state bid. Second, um, so it's open for discussion. Nothing. Nothing. Denise, you are you good? I'm good. All right. Yeah. So, uh, all in favor? I think we can do a full call for the vote. Yep, that's a good idea. Um, Denise. Yeah. Paul. Yes. Miles, yes. Motion passes. Okay. Next purchase order is um, 1898 to Stratford County Sheriff's Department for $5,269.54 for the annual dispatch assessment. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Did we not already do that, Caroline? I thought we did something on that behalf. We did. The county is on a different fiscal year from July through June, so we paid the 19 slash 20 invoice um, and this is the 20 slash 21 invoice, I believe. So, um, okay. yeah, it's not a duplicate. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Nope. Uh, all in favor? Um, Denise? Yes. Paul? Yes. Miles? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. I think that's it for police. How about fire? We, we have the fire chief in the room along with the assistant chief. Anything? Anything for us? thing is we were going to do a little discussion on the heat he, he issues. I just ask you to speak up so computers and yeah. public So everybody can hear. Can hear. Yeah. Yeah, we were, uh, well, we talked before we came up here, and again, it was to the point where 
the cost of the propane issue is where we were going after Sean. We all see the spreadsheet when he's done, correct? Uh, Denise can't hear you. Denise can't hear me? Okay. You can kind of scooch this way yeah. if you maintain your six feet, you know? Okay. Yeah, two yards. <laughs> Well, it's kind of a spin-off from what we talked about a few weeks ago when we were comparing all the different bids and whatnot. And uh, I think we're at the point now where we, we, what was it, 70 cents a gallon that we're paying for propane, and I think we can switch a vendor and make a big savings. But we can also use that same vendor to complete the project, which we're going to need to do eventually. So. That's kind of what we came down as one of our main focuses tonight was to see what we want to do with that. So step one to switch the vendor. I think that was kind of what we were all agreeing on okay. when we were going through yep. this the last time. So, so I think my recommendation would be step one, switch the propane. There is going to be a cost associated with that both from tank recovery and for fixing the issues that were discovered as far as the current piping goes. Let me make sure. Can you guys hear this? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. I'm listening like my ear to the computer, but okay. I can hear it. <coughs> we should make sure that they don't do any more oil deliveries, especially to the fire station. Okay, I need verification from Caroline. What kind of commitment we have with our other vendor before we decide to switch now? I don't see our current, uh, current agreement being any kind of commitment. It's really more of a price guarantee. So I don't see a risk in this path, really, particularly if we're just isolating the fire department. Um, stopping oil, there's no consequence to stopping oil at the fire department. Um, changing propane, it probably makes sense to do all the propane all at once. Um, I, I think... You know, you could get a legal opinion, but I sent the board the price agreement that we have, and I really don't, you know, there's no consequence in there. There's no 30 days notice. It's really just a, um, a price guarantee, so to speak. So um, I think my recommendation would be um, to, if you're going to move forward with switching vendors for propane, then you switch vendors for the whole town for propane at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we should just pay for the fire station. So, we're so going to do it. we're going to do it all. Right, but propane can be separate from the other fuels. That doesn't necessarily have to be at the same time. Yeah, it, all right. And he has looked at the transfer station and at the town shed, highway barn, and both of those are fine to be replaced. There's no piping that needs to be upgraded in either of those places. Um, so that the board knows the three price quotes that we got, P. Gagney was 158, D. F. Richard was 159 per gallon. Our current bid, which is what he put in when we asked him for it, is 229.9 for propane per gallon from Townsend. Okay, okay. Uh, is, the town, is the fire station the only one that gets? Um, um, no, the transfer or the town hall gets it as well. Okay, so I don't really want to say this in a public meeting, however. We should really think about what this could do to us if we pull out a portion of it. Well, there, there's not really a problem with going you know, just changing everything. You can certainly change everything, and Sean got price quotes for all the fuels, which I believe are in the Google Drive folder. Right. But to me, the best interest for the town to maintain control would be do it all. Yeah. That's opinion. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I think that makes sense. Stick with, with one vendor. Um, I mean, we only had a price guarantee on the oil anyway with the school, and we, we locked in on propane at 229 Yeah, and the rest of it was an over-cost price. Okay. So there's certainly not a reason to delay the other fuels. It's just, you know, it's um, just about getting the new... How many, line. how many tanks are there to swap out altogether? 
So three behind the new bay. So five, seven or eight. Seven or eight. At a thousand each. No. Oh, okay. 145. Oh, okay. Your projected savings this year should be 2,000 plus. Okay. Yep. yep. So before the tank return and the piping upgrades. Can you can you go through where are those tanks? That's more than I would have thought. So there's three tanks behind the new addition of the station. There's one large tank next to the generator at the fire station. Okay. There is a tank at the transfer station, mm -hmm. and I believe two behind the highway barn. Okay. And, and George, you may know better on the highway barn. I'm going off memory there, and that's why I said seven or eight. No, there's one 500 gallon tank at the highway barn okay. and a 257 gallon tank at the transfer station. So I have backwards to that. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's so those all have to be taken out and then replaced by whoever we're going to um, sign up with, right? Yes. So it was quick question, is it number six or seven of the tanks? Seven. Uh, seven. So I have three for the station, one for the generator, one for the transfer, and one for the highway, which is six. It's two. Two for the transfer. Two for the transfer? Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I'll refer to you guys on this, uh, Miles and Denise, because you know more about it than I do right now. I'm just getting up to speed. Mm -hmm. So it's $1,015, and our savings. More than covers that. More than covers it. I think it's kind of a no brainer. Um, so, is there more discussion? Should we entertain a motion? Well, can I just revisit this for a second? So, 145 per tank, but the fire station requires some pipe work. No. So, can you just review what is the estimated cost of that pipe work? The, the pipe work is expensive. It's like $4,800. So, we're going to have to do that at the same time? Whoever we go to is going to require that everything be upgraded to code to replace the tanks. And we're not. According to both the Shard and Gagnon. So it sounds like the cost is going to be around six thousand dollars for new tanks plus pipe fitting minus the two thousand dollar savings is approximately four thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Oh, we pay out four thousand dollars to do this. Is that what you're saying? We're going to pay out six thousand dollars to do this, but we're going to save two thousand dollars. A year. A year. So, so really it's going to cost you like $4,000 when you take into consideration the amount you're saving. But we're also not up to code. Right. No. Right. So, so just to revisit with the spreadsheet in front of me, $3,749 in piping costs. Can you repeat that? $3,749 $3, in piping costs. Okay. So is, is there any way that we can go back after the vendor who put it in incorrectly and get that recoup back? I think that they're going to say that they replaced an existing unit with a like unit and reused what was there. That was a number of years ago, right? And, yeah, the original sure. one would have okay. the bay was added. But that's an interesting question. Is it worth going back to Townsend to say that the, the, the piping is not up to code and, you know, fix the piping and then switch vendors if we... But they're not going to fix on them. They weren't the ones that installed it, right? I think it's changed hands. I think the company that originally installed it, Townsend, acquired. Um, so you're not really going to win it. Borderline. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have. Hi, Ken. Um, looking for Selma. She just called. 
Thanks. So, we... Hi. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're in the slightly, meeting. Slightly distracted. Um, have, we have okay. probably some time to think yeah. about it, or, I mean, uh, I don't know, I, I, I feel like it's, it's a decision that makes sense to me. The, the only... Oh, but why the urgency tonight? That's why I'm, I'm concerned. And I think the only urgency is as you continue to pay more for propane every time they deliver, and you also have an undersized pipe going to a heater that's going to lower the longevity of that unit. I know, but can we wait months to not have to have it be rushed or another month and be out of winter? And that's why I'm saying hold off on all of the other fixing of the furnace. That whole decision, get past the coronavirus impact, and then make a decision on that. I mean, yes, we can. It, it's running now. Just each time they come, you're going to pay more. I agree with you. However, I still have to pay the, the amount that you have to pay. To Well, right, but I think what Sean's trying to say is that eventually you're going to have to pay the repiping cost anyway, but in the meantime, do you want to continue to pay for service calls when it blinks out? Yeah, yeah. So is it worth, um, like you said, we're delaying it for a month, but we're all in agreement that going for one contract is what we should do, but we don't have to make a decision tonight. Current vendor, but that's what Ganya's 
only change to a bigger tent. Personally. Okay. Sure. So, um, can we have the fire department just find out what the lead time would be to do changing out of tents, and then we can notify um, the other vendor that we currently have once we know that information? Yep, I'm getting nods, nods around the room. Yeah, I will okay. reach out to them and get that. Okay. But, but my understanding is, is we're going to wait, Still wait 30, 30 days. days before we're even going to move forward with a purchase order, so. Well, if we could, if we can get information from Dr. what their commitment is to put new tanks in and piping and what that's going to cost, we may not have to wait 30 days, but I'd like to at least know what the lead time is to have worked before we notify the other vendor. It makes sense that you would want a gap in service and delivery yeah. and, and all that. And, and that's the one good thing about them doing all new piping, is they could be side by side. Mm -hmm. But we don't know if it's a week or if it's a month or if it's two months out. We don't know that yet. Right. I suspect they're going to be looking for work. <laughs> uh, uh, no, they may or they may not. Yeah. They may have a they may have a full vessel of putting in things. You don't know. Unlike you guys, no, you know, guys. He, he called me on Thursday and said, you know, just wondering if the town had decided anything, and I said that you guys had not yet, and that I didn't know where it was going to be on the priority given everything. And he said, you know, that he just wanted to be ready if we call him, that, okay. you know, he will make it available. I, you know, I, I think the 15, 30 days is, is fine, but I think if you said, hey, we want it next week, They're here. they would get it done. Yeah. I can get a purchase order now if you want to get a purchase order. But we don't know what the, what the timeline is. Well, you don't need to know what the timeline is. If you're going to authorize it, the purchase order can authorize it, and the timeline doesn't matter. And so what you could do is sign the purchase order, approve and sign the purchase order, and then leave it to the fire department to coordinate it with the vendor so that there's no lapse in... Right. Service and delivery. Okay, and we're not just talking fire, we're talking all, all, yes. all tanks mm -hmm. and all delivery. Well, the propane is the only thing that they won't deliver to, right? I mean, the oil, they will deliver right away. Right. Okay. 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 I just got to think about that, Paul and Miles. Um think about signing a purchase order? Or or going forward without knowing right now what the delivery is. Oh, I think, that's, I think that's fine. If we have an office authorized purchase order, then that gives us ultimate flexibility. If they if they tell us it's three months, it's three months. Um, okay. I mean, there's no, there's no rush on that. On that. So, again, I'm new, so I'm going to defer to you guys to need some Miles, what do you think is best in this? If you think it's best to go forward in the next 30 days, I'm good with it. Okay. Okay. Are you okay with that, Miles? I'm good, yep. Um, okay. Caroline is filling out a purchase order as we speak, and we'll be ready to move it in a second. Okay. you to fill in. Um, I can multiply out the 145, um, but if you would fill in the pipe amounts. So just to clarify, it's not Gagney that will pay the 145, that's Townsend, and it will go on the existing. 
cross out guide them then, if you would, and put towns in. Oh, so we need two purchase orders. All right. I apologize, I didn't think that one through really well. So if you can make that uh, um, probably for Gagnon and then um, and cross out the, the tanks and then make that one for town. Um, All right. Um, so while Sean works on that, um, why don't we, do, do you have anything else, Chief? No, oh, that's really all that we were coming okay. in and trying to get squared away. Um, George, are you still on the line? Yeah, right here. Okay. Uh, so we have a purchase order for you as well. Um, that I will I'll make a motion uh, to uh, accept purchase order 1788 to Pike Industries uh, in the amount of $1,500 uh, for gravel for various projects. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, discussion on gravel? to keep busy well things we go on slot here. Okay. Any other discussion? Alright. Uh, I'll uh, all in favor say I actually I'm sorry. Um, Denise? Yeah. Uh, Paul? Yes. Miles, yes. Motion passes. Um, do you have anything else, George? I just want to know what you want us to be doing. Keep, I know we, we're going to be around. we got to keep busy. I just want to leave here because of what's going on. That's a good question. What, um, but how much do you interact with people? Doing what we plan on doing is just going to be the three of us out putting gravel on the shoulders that we didn't get a chance to do last fall. Okay. Try to get some of this stuff cleaned up. And we're trying, you know, we're, we're staying away from people altogether. We're, we're not allowing people to visit anything like that. So we just want to know what your thoughts of what's going on. I, other departments have cut their crews in half, which would be kind of hard for us to do. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't do anything. <laughs> right. So I mean, we're just trying to stay busy. And that's why I want some gravel money so we can at least keep going and get some projects done well in this time. So, so George, the only thing I'll comment on that is, um, I mean, I don't think there's a problem with you working and stuff, but like you said, um, extreme minimal contact with the general public and, you know, social distance at least six feet, and you should be all set, but make sure people are coming up and trying to ask questions or something that you keep their distance. Especially because, um, you know, we don't know what's going on here with this, and there's certain ages that get hit harder than others, and so just be careful. All three of the three of you out there? Yeah. All three of you, you know, just keep your distance from the public, is what I say. No, I agree. It's, you know, we're, we're just trying to keep busy and, you know, not just be hanging around, so. The uh, fire chief has a comment to make. Well, I just wanted to kind of chime in when we're talking about distancing and, and whatnot. I mean, Sean and I head back to the station tonight. We have, you know, our normal complement of folks there. This is the last Monday night we're going to do that. We've rearranged our personnel into three individual companies. And on our Monday nights, there's still things we have to do. We have to keep the trucks up, keep the station disinfected. So we're going to be shortening our normal Monday night mannings down by a third. As I said, three companies. Each company's probably got half a dozen guys and those that are available for any Monday night. But it's just so that we can continue to do what we need to do just for our in-house business. So we reduce that. We pretty much close the station down ourselves also. So uh, we're just going to be doing that on a three-week rotating basis between the three companies. That's what we're doing. Great. And can I ask you one question? Mm -hmm. Our incident down at the uh, uh, water well, treatment good. plant, we had some conversations with them today about numbers and whatnot, dealings with Primex. Is there anything that you need on that? They're their own entity, so they're not even going to be worried about. You're not worried about anything that went on down there. 
The only concern that the town would have would be related to workers' comp or property liability with our equipment and our staff in that response. But anything that happens to that facility or their people falls under their insurance. It's all their insurance. Yeah, and it's probably next because, like I said, I had some conversations with them today. So I just wanted to make sure that we had nothing wrong with our personnel. There's no medical issues, no equipment issues. So we, uh, we were fine after that incident. But I just wanted to touch bases and make sure that I, that's what I figured, but I didn't want to have any crossover and leave something open. So. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all. Stuart? Yes. Where, how do you stand on your uh, recycling um, prospect that you were doing, uh, putting the cover over the um, copper? The trusses are up. The trusses are all up. We're waiting on some good weather here to get the, the sheet metal down. So we still get those projects to work on, so. That's something you might be able to fill in. Yeah, yeah we're, we're doing that when we have the, the weather and not when they're closed, obviously. Okay, good, good. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'm getting called out now to plow, so. Go ahead. Hey, George, be safe. Good night. Yeah, Bye. thanks, George. Okay, I've got some fresh purchase orders in front of me. Um, I'll move purchase order 1819 to Pete Gagnon and Son. Uh, for $3,749, and that's to retrofit pipe replacement at the fire department. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? I just want a clarification. What is the is it for the, the piping that's in the new, the new bed, right? That's, mm -hmm. so, so it would consolidate the current core tanks down to one tank and fix all of the piping issues to the heater in the new addition, the current generator, and into the station that we use for the stoves yeah. that are in the station. So it fixes all not, of that. So it has nothing to do with the furnace itself in the utility room or whatever. That is... It's more the other, more the other stuff. That anything for propane. Yes. Yep. That's it. That's okay, it. thank you. Okay, anything else? All right, uh, let's call for a vote. Um, Denise? Yes. Paul? Yes. Miles, yes. Motion passes. And I will move purchase order 1820 to Townsend Energy uh, for removal of seven propane tanks at a cost of 145 each for a grand total of $1,015. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there a discussion? Are they really trying to remove them? Seems, it seems that way, yeah. So, so currently Gagney does not, but Townsend does. Right. Uh, okay, so are we going to, before they get removed and before we call them to do it, going to be after we know that what Ganya's schedule was, so we don't have any significant time. I'm going to ask them what they do once we notify them about what is in the tank and what if we're going to get re reimbursed or whatever's in there. Right? We're going to ask that question. Yeah, I, I will gladly do that if that's the board's wishes. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Yes. The answer is yes. Okay, yep. okay. All right. All right, let's uh, call for the vote. Um, Denise? Yeah. Paul? Yes, but I gotta, I gotta go back for a second. So, Denise, what are you saying? If, if Pete get, if Pete the son doesn't remove the tanks, right? No, they can't. It's not okay. their no. okay. I just want yeah. to make one of Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Miles, yes. Motion passes. Okay. I don't know if it gets what um, Anything else from our fire no. friends? No? Nope. Good. Okay, please disinfect on your way out. <laughs> My only question, real quick, is. What do you want for, for a letter of commitment as far as we have the quote? 
Do you need anything else from them as far as the price guarantees and all of that go? Um, does the quote require signature? I mean, to my mind, a quote is, you know, is a quote, and they should be abiding by that, and that should be sufficient. But, it, you know, I guess... Is there um, a contract? Yeah, so it does require a acceptance of contract by both parties. Okay, so I... Um, Given that the purchase order was approved, that will authorize for Miles to sign it, who's here, and I'll just make sure at the end of the meeting that he, I'll print that and have him sign it. Yeah, and that quote also shows their price. Okay, great. That's why. And then I will scan it to you. I don't need to Okay. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> Denise, you were going to say something, all right? I, I just didn't know if you knew Ed was online now with us and if he had anything. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, hey, Ed. Good night. Good night. Thank you, guys. Hello. Oh, I'm just running today. Very swell. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm down to the truck now. So um, the only thing I had was I don't know if you discussed it already, but uh, conversation about collecting cash at the transfer station. Uh, I had sent. Uh, uh, Caroline an email last Friday about it. Uh, I was on with a uh, with a group with the NRA had a conference call last Friday morning to do with this whole virus thing going on, and a number of the different transfer stations around the state are doing different things. Uh, some of them are downright closing, which I don't think is a very good idea, uh, which I don't want to do. Uh, but one of the big denominators was cash and how we accept the cash for, you know, for the different things that we charge for. Cash is the number one dirtiest item that we probably handle over there. And I just want to know what your thoughts might be in suspending, um, accepting, you know, taking in money till, you know, for a period of time, whether it's two weeks, four weeks, or, or whatever you think. Um, I primarily have one person that, that handles the cash. They do have gloves, uh, they do have hand sanitizer, but the whole process, uh, you know, just might be something to think about. I ran a few numbers. We've taken in a little over $2,200 this year. Uh, it's the slowest time of year we have uh, working into one of the busier, busier times. Um, We've had 10 weeks, it's about, 20, about $224 average a week right now. Um, I guess I'll throw it to you for your thoughts. My opinion is that a lot of a lot of people don't deal with that. You know, we don't take debit cards or anything like that. That's, that's the only thing I would be concerned about. So you might get some angry people that they can't dispose of their stuff because we won't take cash. Well, well, my thought is is to still accept the items, but not charge. Well, then you're going to get the other people paid and angry. <laughs> okay, but I think you're also going to get. I'm, I'm just looking at the safety of the guys over there. That's all. I am too. I am too. I'm not trying to be unreasonable. Yep. I know me. Uh, or maybe we just don't take any large item during this time. Don't take any demo at all. Right. It's a possibility. Yeah, well, it's well, a temporary basis, you know? The problem with that is you better make sure we let the public know because, you know, you don't want someone to fall into the dump with a loaded truck and then say, oh, sorry, we can't take that because I'm going to be pissed off because they're loaded up already. Yeah, I mean, I there's going to be someone who's not going to be happy for sure, but yeah. um, you can't not charge, you can't charge someone and then not charge somebody else because they didn't have a check or they don't have a checking account or anything of that sort. So, oh, yeah. It would have to be either all or nothing. All or nothing. So I would say that we don't take any demo or anything that we to have to be paid for for a couple of weeks. I don't know. I'm, so that's one option. The other option is, you know, you know, should we... Put faith in our public and say, okay, because of the virus, we're not charging right now, and we do like an honor system where people come in and we just take their names, and then in the near future, like a month or two months from now, hope, hope to God this is done, and then they can pay us. 
because I would think most citizens would appreciate that and be honored. And, and that, that we could do that, that we could do discussion. Yep, that we could do quite easily. Uh, we have receipt books over there. We can cross out the word receipt and use them as a uh, you know, use them as a, as a as a bill as a as a as a bill form. Caroline, how are we handling town hall with taking cash? We still have to take cash for motor vehicles because, like you say, not everybody has a checking account. So some people are putting cash in the drop box. The drop box is secure. Um, we have gloves and hand sanitizer. It's it's not perfect. You know, he's quite right that that cash is the dirtiest thing that we deal with. Yeah, it's an interesting subject to bring up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm new with this, so I, I would lay it at my old Denise, but I think it's maybe a month just credit, and then yeah. okay, if we get 80% of our money back, we're good. Yeah, yeah. And I, the receipt book we have is a two-path, so I will definitely, we'll definitely have a record of who we give a receipt or a, a slip to, and uh, can follow up as well. What do you guys think? I would say make sure you have a phone number written down. Yeah. Um, with yeah. how you get, um, if we if they don't come back with us, if they can write down the phone number, um, I would say let's try it. And if we don't get all our money, it is what it is. Um, but I agree, safety first. I, I do agree with that. So, I, yeah, yeah I'm charging territory here, guys. Yeah. Exactly. I, I I am a little concerned that word is going to get out that Rollins Fruit is uh, lowering the barrier to. Right. to demo. So I think we just need to keep an eye on it and make sure there's not a huge uptick. Um, and if there is, then we shut it down and say so we're not taking anything. Or or okay. or move to check check and money order only. I mean, you can get a money order at the post office for, I don't know what it costs. Um, you have to know how much you need it for, though, is the problem. And you often don't know that before you get there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But... Yeah, let's let's try a, an invoice system or or you know honor system. Um, we can encourage people to include that bill and put it in the drop box with money at town hall, and we'll take it at town hall. Perfect. That's yeah, cool. that works too. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can put a system together over here. That'll that'll work and. We'll just verify that they have the uh, the permit to get to come in the sticker and give them a receipt. Give them not a receipt, but give them an invoice and run it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And just know, add, just make sure you get names and phone numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, we'll make sure they have. If you if you don't have the permit, you don't have the sticker, you're not going to drop. So, oh, yeah. and we're doing that now anyway, so. Good point. Yeah, but the, uh, I went on a, on a couple of different conference calls with uh, NRRA and, uh, you know, the, the things that the different stations, transfer stations are doing, some are drastic, as I said, some closed until this is over, but that is not the thing to do, because you don't want this stuff sitting in somebody's house. And, right. um, you know, some have stopped taking uh, demos, some have stopped taking recyclables, but, I think with with the two to three people we have here, three on Saturdays, um, they're all aware of how we're, how we're doing it. I actually put out a uh, memo to them a week ago when this all started, you know, requiring them to wear the disposable gloves, which we found, we found some now, we have plenty. Uh, you know, they do have the N95 masks if, if something they need there. Uh, so I think we've got everything in place that we possibly could do to keep them safe. And uh, I'd like to say we're a little bit on, ahead of the game on it, I think, from, from some of the transfer stations out there. So, good. Yep, that's about all I have tonight. So, appreciate it. Great. Thank all you, right. Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, yeah, Ed. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Let's move into town administration. Um, I, I'm going to suggest that um, the appointments that we handle tonight are the um, urgent ones, um, just given that it's the getting later and I'm sure the roads aren't getting any better. Um, so, board member appointments to committees. Um, uh, 
Uh, Caroline sent an email with a list. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to see it, Paul. Um, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna move to that screen now. So. Oh, okay. She's gonna display it. Um, so, police chief, emergency management director, tax collector, road agent, health officer. I think those are the sort of essential ones at this point. Um, so do we do these? Like, you can do them collectively or okay. individually. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion that we appoint the um, offices just discussed um, as presented. Okay. I think you probably should click for the record just because we're online and we should say please keep Robert E. John. I, I'll do it uh, if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Okay. Uh, Police Chief Rod, Robert Duchamp, Emergency Manager Director Robert Duchamp, Tax Collector Andrea Cass, Road Agent George Gilmet, and Health Officer Tom Clark. All right. Agree. Uh, I'll, I'll second that as a, as a motion. Um, and let's do a roll call vote. Um, Denise? Yes. Uh, Paul? Yes. And Miles? Yes. That motion passes. Um, those those folks get another another year. Um, we we can table the the rest of the rest. Um, of the planning. We we can. Um, if 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 somebody would like to make a motion, I did not get as far as printing the disbursement forms, but if somebody wanted to make a motion to disperse first quarter elected official disbursements to select board members and the treasurer, that would be helpful and we can process that in the next payroll. Okay, did everyone hear that? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we do disbursements for elected officials. All right. And I have a second from Paul. Uh, roll call, Denise? Yes. Paul? Yes. Miles, yes. Um, so I can sign um, everyone's but my own tonight, and then at some point... Um, somebody else, when somebody else comes in, the other can get signed. Okay. Okay. Um, so the only, you know, item C on the agenda, the only other thing that I think is important to address tonight is that the next schedule meeting of the select board is um, going to be on April 6th. The current order is that there are no meetings besides select board meetings until April 6th. So, and that the town hall is closed to the public until April 6th. So, um, that's certainly fine, but um, we could also extend that and that gives the public more notice rather than not knowing whether or not we're open on the 7th until the 7th. Good point. How do people feel? Um, I, I don't even know when to extend it to if, or if we just go two weeks at a time. We can always extend it. To the end of April, and then if it all goes away, we can always rebuild. That's true. But knowing, it, I would like to go to the end of April at this point. Um, and then, like I say, everything gets all better, then we can always stop it. Like, yep. Yep. We can always reopen early, right? I'm okay with right. it. Right. Sure. I think we can hope so. All right, so uh, I'll make a motion that we continue to um, suspend operations at Town Hall through the end of April and cancel um, committee meetings until April 31st. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, Denise. Yes. Paul? Yes. Miles, yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Uh, I see recreation. I don't know if, if yeah. you wanted to. Um, so, I don't know if we want to talk about recreation. 
Um, if, if we feel like we want to wait and see what's going to happen or just call it quits now? My concern is that if we don't make a decision soon, um, they're not going to have enough time to have people sign up. I, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I don't think it's going to happen this year. I'm not sure I'm prepared to vote on that, but I, I don't think they're going to be able to have it. Yeah. I mean, that's unfortunate. Uh, I, and, if I, and if they can't meet, because they're such a large community, I don't know how they're going to to do it. Yeah, I have to, I have to agree to the need you said right now is, I mean, there are a lot of concerns in town, and I don't mean to put recreational way down, but I don't think it's high as the concern of a lot of things right now. Um, and like you said, they, I, I don't know if you guys know, but there's no more meetings of 10 or more because we've adopted the answer today, the other two minutes like that, so we're at a pretty serious level right now, so uh, I, I think we should my personal opinion is just shelf recreation, but that's um, you guys. What do we think about deciding, you know, affirmatively at the April 6th meeting, so kick the can two weeks and then, and then make a decision? That would probably work. I would okay. be okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel the same that it's, it's, it's really a shame to have to cancel it altogether, but I don't. I don't see it happening, but, okay, so that was, um, okay, now we have a couple more items, uh, community input, we have one community member, he's shaking his head now, um, anyone on the phone, is there anyone? No, nope, there's nobody okay. on the phone. Um, and we do not have to go into non-public? We do not. We had one welfare application, um, I spoke with her today over the phone, and, um, Given how welfare works, you know, um, they discussed it as a household and they will come back if they want to go that route, but for right now, they don't. I do still, I do have two applications out in the world that I'm expecting back um, any time now, so there's that. Um, I purchased a document holder with a lid to go outside that we can put blank welfare applications in so that people can pick them up on their own. Um, I'm trying to create a contingency plan in case we don't always have people in the office so that we can always process welfare. So if we, um, if we don't meet next week and you get an application tomorrow, how does it get approved? So, it, you know, the, the board, as it stands now, the board is still approving um, request for welfare. And actually, I, I take it back, um, we do need to go into non-public for an existing case. But okay. before we do that, um, to finish your question, Miles, um, the, the board would have to meet to handle it. And, and I do anticipate we're going to have an increased need because we're having increased inquiries and given what we know about the solution of the situation. So should we plan to have at least a brief weekly meeting of the select board until whatever happens or sh we can authorize Caroline to make, you, we can authorize you to make welfare decisions? You, you can and I can keep you on, you know, um, informed about what they are, what the circumstances are and what the decision is and, and give you updates about that. Um, it can be temporary, um, or you can just meet, you know, on the, you know, when there's a case to be heard, um, which may end up being weekly, I'm not sure. You know, the, the only thing, you know, what I think is worth thinking about with that is, um, given the nature of the pandemic that we're dealing with, um, how do we handle it if, two board members are um, not well or not able to participate in a meeting in some way. It seems as though the governor's new order allows for more flexibility so that we will not have to have a physical location and people can just call in, which will be helpful. Um, so, 
If I, I interpreted that right. My opinion. Can I weigh in for a second? So I think we should we should grant Caroline like special special privileges to make decisions for like I don't know. I might say the next month because of what's going on in the emergency. I mean, if we don't want people being um, I don't know the right words, but if they need assistance, especially because of their sick or the flu or something, like, because of the COVID-19, that they should get the help. Yeah. Um, I agree. I agree. And I think that, you know, bottom line is, he does all the research. He does all of the stuff. So, like, work anyway on it. And he's just giving us the dollar amount. Yeah. So, he's just updated on what she's doing. And if, they, and if she has any more concern about the amount that someone's requesting, then can call us into our electronic meeting if we can. And, yeah. and just give us a little update. It's all a non-public, so it's not even... As long as you post it to non-public and what it's for, then you don't have to have it. It's how I read the thing that the uh, governor to assign. Um, so we do have some flexibility. Um, but I think if we can give her a little way, she does all the legwork anyway. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I mean, we're in a... So, yeah, we're in the next thing. They upgraded it yesterday, the... the um, I wish I could remember what they call it, but it's, it's an elevated to the next level in the state of New Hampshire. Um, so it's a, it's pretty much an emergency now. So. Okay. For well, over a hundred cases today. Wow. Yeah, it had a huge jump today. Yeah. So I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. So. so do we want to get a dollar amount or an, an instant amount or what? Do we want to label it or just to give her you know the authorization? Um, not not being able to anticipate the scope of this, I would just, um, a, as much as I, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, I'm going to just, I, I would suggest um, blanket authority through April 30th, and just like meetings in the town office, if things improve before then, then we can go back to normal operations at that time. Okay. So, I think we should probably make a motion... To this Most effect. definitely, so, please. Okay. I'll make a motion that we um, get the uh, town administrator the authority, a blanket authority to handle welfare as she has always handled it with the same guidelines that she possibly can for um, the next month of April 30th. Is that what you said? Yeah. No? Okay, I'll make that motion. And I will second that. And, and I just want to add, like, Denise, that if there's, um, if something, you know, if something comes up that seems really out of the ordinary, then you're going to let the board know anyway, so. Um, you know, I'll just. It should be an issue, I hope. Thank you. Um, thank you all for that. I, I will just make a practice of sending you an email for every incident with an update of, about the context for each incident so you know what's going on. Okay, perfect. Um, Thank you. Okay, so uh, are we ready to vote? Did you have a second? I did have a second. Paul seconded. I seconded. Um, okay. Uh, Denise? Yes. Paul? Yes. Miles? Yes. Motion passes. It's more on your plate. <laughs> um, okay, so we do have to go into non public. Well, we don't now. Oh, we don't know. Okay. Because you just gave me the authority to deal with it, so I can deal okay. with it, and I'll send you an email about it tomorrow. Well, that certainly um, that certainly streamlines things. Yeah. All right. Um, I, or did anyone have anything else they wanted to add, bring up? I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Miles, for me tonight. Uh, yeah, no problem. So by consensus, we can adjourn at seven thirty-six. Okay. Good night, everybody. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Caroline, too, for all of the work that she has been doing yep. at Town Hall. Yeah. I would say good job, Caroline. If I can log on to this and I'm not texting, Tazzy, you did a good job. <laughs> no, I had to go for my wife's email, but I'll figure out how to go for my <laughs> Call me if you need Bye. help. Thank you. Bye, Solomon.